Hello and welcome back to my video on chapters 4 through 7. If you haven't seen the first video already, please click on the annotation here to be taken back to the first video. But if you're coming back with us, then please sit back, relax, and enjoy chapter 6 and 7. Moving right along into chapter 6, here we have the strengths of chapter 6 about quadrilaterals. And the easiest thing I think for anyone is definitely identifying quadrilaterals. So here I have made a chart showing all the different quadrilaterals that there are possible besides an irregular quadrilateral, which would be um, none of these. It has no type of congruency in the angles or sides. So there's just a basic quadrilateral, which can go into three possible choices. A kite, a parallelogram, or a trapezoid. Then, from there in the trapezoid, you can get a right trapezoid or an isosceles trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid has two congruent legs, and a right trapezoid has one leg that is right, uh, forms a right angle with the both bases. Now, for parallelograms, a parallelogram you can get either a rhombus or a rectangle. And in some cases, a rhombus is a rectangle and vice versa. And now, a rhombus can be a square, and a rectangle can be a square. So those both go to that. So that's probably the easiest thing about quadrilaterals right there. Now, my main weaknesses in Chapter 6 are remembering the area formulas. Some of them are pretty basic and easy, but a couple of them get more complicated, and I end up forgetting which one goes with which. I mix up a few of them. Alright, so a very simple one would be um, a square, which is just a side squared. Uh, another easy one is a rectangle, which is just base times height, or length times width, depending on how you want to do your formula. A parallelogram is also pretty easy, just base times height, except for at a picture you have to have the actual height, because you can't just use one of the, the uh, side lengths because that's not the height, so that's at an angle. Same thing with the rhombus goes for a parallel parallelogram, or you can use the formula to find a kite for to find a rhombus's area too. After that, we have a trapezoid, which is one half of base one plus base two times the height. And a kite, we have one half d one, which is diagonal one, times d two. And that's to find a kite. Moving right along into the fourth and final part of this episode, Chapter 7, Transformations. Here we have my strengths, are translations and vectors. The formula to find the vector is x sub 2 minus x sub 1, y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Here I've made up two examples and worked them out for you. The first one is being given a vector and having to find out what the end product is. And that's if P, 3 comma 6, and Q, 2 comma 4, is translated to P prime Q prime with a vector of negative 4 comma 2, what are the coordinates of P prime Q prime? The way you find out the answer to this problem is you take the 3 and subtract 4 from it, to negative 4 for the vector, and you take the 2 and subtract 4 from it, because again, it's negative 4 for the vector, and this is a line, so you have to do the same to both coordinates, and then you add 2 to 6, and add 2 to 4, because same thing with the x. And so if you do that, you get the answer is that p prime is at negative 1, comma 8, and that q prime is at negative 2, comma 6. Now for my second example, we have been given both the starting coordinate and the ending coordinate, and you have to find the vector. So what is the vector if x, 10, 7, and y, 4, 18, is translated onto x prime, negative 3, 21, and y prime, negative 9, 32? Now the answer to this is negative 13, 14. And so the way you'd find this one out is by using the formula that I've mentioned above. So we would have 
negative 3 minus 10 and also have negative, three, negative 9 minus 4 to find the x, which would be negative 13. If you do it for both of those, you find out it's negative 13. And if you do it for the y coordinate, you would do 21 minus 7, or you could do 32 minus 18, and that comes out to 14. And there you have it, that's your vector. Very easy stuff. All right, we are now almost done. We're continuing with chapter seven with the weaknesses. My weakness chapter seven was the freeze patterns. A freeze is a plane or decorated horizontal pattern of entablature between the architrave and cornice of a decorative horizontal band as along the upper part of a wall in a room. So the mathematical definition would be that it is a horizontal pattern that repeats using a series of transformations. This word comes from the French word frise and it means an embroidery from Latin as well, opus. So, back to the frieze. There are seven different types and those are T for translation, TR for translation 180 degree rotation, TV for translation vertical reflection, TG for translation collide reflection, THG for translation horizontal reflection, glide reflection, TRVG for translation 180 degree rotation, vertical and glide reflection, and the longest one, which is also the hardest one to say, is TRHVG, which is a translation 180 degree rotation, both types of reflections, and also a glide reflection. And here I have some examples of the different ones. They are labeled on the left and there's a picture showing what it looks like on the right. So the first one is a translation, the second one would be TG, the third one would be THG, the fourth one would be TV, and the fifth one is TR, the sixth one is TRVG, and last but, but not least, the very bottom one, the seventh one, is TRHVG. Alright, that about wraps things up. See you guys next time when I have to do another portfolio for Mr. Montgomery's class. Monty, please give me an A. Alright, later.